Hey everybody, Will here, and today we are going to be learning how to be using the H-Bridge motor as well as DC motors in the Getting Started with Arduino class. Now, the H-Bridge is a little tiny unit. Uh, it's usually called the L298N H-Bridge motor, and all these things do is they allow you to increase your voltage so you can power a little bit higher powered motors with it. You're no longer limited to 5 volts. And more importantly, we can easily control the direction of both motors very, very easily, actually. So once you have your Arduino IDE opened up, go ahead and just delete everything in there, and we're going to start on line one. Now, what we're going to do first, because we're learning how to use this, we're going to create a comment. So remember, we do slash slash to start a comment, and we're just going to call this motor a, just so you understand where we're working with. So we have two motors, motor A and motor B. So in motor A, we're going to create three integers. Integer ENA, and we're going to set that to pin 9. What that means is we're setting the engine output on the H-bridge, and then we're going to have IN1 and IN2. Now that is to represent input 1 and input 2 on our H-bridge motor. Basically, your motors have two directions they can go in. They can either go forward, which is input 1, or move backwards, which is input 2. And the way that works is through the use of magnetics, which is pretty cool. And we can power one side so it gets the uh, motor spinning itself to go forward, or we can uh, power the other side, which gets it spinning backwards. So let's go ahead and set that to integer, and we'll go ENA. We're going to set that to 9. Make sure you add your semicolons. We'll go integer IN1. Oop. We want to make sure that is IN1, no space in there. And we're going to set that to 8. And we'll do integer IN2. And we're going to set that to 7. All right. Next, we're going to set our motor B. So we'll do our comments so we understand where we're working with. So we'll do motor B. And same thing, we'll do integer EN B, EN3, or IN3, sorry, and IN4. So let's go ahead and set that. So we'll do integer EN, oops, EN B, and we'll set that to pin 3. Then we'll do integer IN3. And we're going to, boy, I can't type today, can I? Uh, we're going to set that to pin 5, and then integer 4, or IN4, is going to be uh, pin 4. So let's get those set. And we'll go here, set that to pin 4, and we are good setting up our integers for this. Next, we can jump into our void setup. And in our void setup, we're going to want to set all of these to output. So we'll have integer ENA through IN4, and we're going to set those all to outputs. So I'm going to type the first one, just so you can remember uh, or see how that's going to look, and then I'm going to pause the video and jump back in after I've typed it in. So we're going to do pin mode, and we're going to set, sorry, uh, ENA, and we're going to set that to in output put like that. Now again, we're going to do this for then IN1, IN2, ENB, IN3, and IN4. We're going to set those all to outputs. So I'm going to pause my video and I'm going to jump back, I'm going to input all of those, uh, and I encourage you to do the same at this point. All right, so I had that done the easiest way. I just copied one of these and then pasted it uh, six times and then changed it accordingly. You could have done the same or you could have typed it out. Either way. So next, we're actually not going to jump into our void loop. We're going to be doing something a little different. We're actually going to be writing an entire program that we're going to call Demo1 in this case. And in Demo1, it's going to create a whole set of instructions that we can then place into our void loop afterwards. So to do this, we're going to call it void, and we'll call it Demo1. And we go here. And now we're going to write... Basically, we're going to tell our uh, engines to, sorry, let me add a little more room here. We're going to tell our engines that they need to move forward. So to do this, we're going to need to turn motor A on. And just so you understand how this works, let's go ahead and add the comments. When we go back and we can see how it works, we're going to call this turn motor A on. 
Okay, and in here, all we're going to do is set a digital write like this, and we're going to do IN1, comma, and we're going to turn that on high. So input one is going to be your forward movement for your motors. In this case, we want to make sure that we're not turning on uh, input two. So we're going to do a digital write. Yep. Make sure you add your semicolon there. So we'll do digital write. And we'll do input two. And we're going to set that as low. Next, we're going to need to turn motor B on. So it's going to look very similar, but we're going to use the corresponding integers or inputs that we created for it. So let's make our comment here. And uh, hold on one second. I like it when all of my stuff lines up correctly. Makes it easier when reading it. So let's go here, we'll delete some stuff here like that. Okay. Now let's create our comment here to say we're turning on motor B. And we're going to set it very similar. So we'll do the digital write. And we're going to set it as input three is going to be our forward movement. And of course, we'll do digital write again and turn our input four to off. So we'll go low, oops, IN4, comma, low. All right, now that we have that, we can set the speed. So we have a speed of uh, our range essentially is at zero to 255 because we're using analog, right? So let's go ahead and set our speeds for both of these. And let's, ooh, you know what? Let's jump back in here into input four, or I'm sorry, into uh, motor A, add a few spaces, and let's just turn on motor A uh, to set the speed. So we'll go analog, right, and we'll set EN A, and we're going to set that to a speed of 200. Now that we have that, we can jump down underneath our motor B, do the same thing, analog, right, oops. So we'll go analog, right, and we'll set that for engine B of a speed of 200. Same thing as motor A. And then let's go ahead and set a delay here, and we'll have it run for two seconds. Okay, now that we have this running, we have a delay of two seconds. Let's say our robot, our vehicle, whatever we've created has gone forward, right? So now we wanna bring it back. So we can do a very simple process here of going delay, right? And we'll set everything as an opposite. So we'll do IN1, it's going to be low. You can see here, I did a mistake here. It's digital right there. So, and digital right here. So digital right, and we'll set input two. And we'll set that to high. So let's turn it on backwards. Then we'll do again a digital right. And we'll do input three. It's going to be turned off because we turned it on before. And we're going to turn input four to high. So digital right, IN four, high. And once we bring it back to us where it started from, so we can do a delay of 2000. Let's go ahead and turn all the motors off so it doesn't move anymore. I'm going to simply just steal my code from here, drop it in under here. I'm gonna change all of these to low. So all of the motors, all of the directions are turned off. And we don't have to worry about that. Now I might be curious if I were to come back here and figure out what's going on. So let's go here, let's add the comment. We'll go here and we'll call this reverse direction. And 
and we'll call this turn off. There we go. And now I have my void demo one completed. Go ahead and hit enter afterwards, making sure that your curly bracket, your string, connects to the one up here next to void demo one. And let's go ahead and create a void demo two, just so we understand and play around with it a little more. Okay. Now in our void demo two, we're going to actually have our vehicle accelerate. And this is what's pretty cool. We can actually set it kind of like we've done with the, um, uh, let's see, we've done with the light where we have it turn on slowly and it keeps adding up and then eventually it'll subtract and go back down to zero. Now in our void demo two here, we're going to have to set our digital right and we're going to be turning the motors on. So before we do that, just so we understand what is going on, let's comment that. Turn motors on. Okay, now let's add our digital right here. So we'll go digital right. And you know what, let's save ourselves some time because this is going to be the same as up here, right? Uh, this one here. Let's go with our reverse direction. Copy that. I'm just doing this for the sake of saving us all some time and watching me type. So we have our digital right. We have input one, two, three, and four, and it goes low, high, low, high. Next, let's create our uh, equation to accelerate it. So we'll go four, and then we'll go create a new integer. Four integer i is zero, semicolon. I is less than 256. We're going to set I to add to itself. And then we'll jump out of our parentheses there. We'll create a new curly bracket. And we'll say analog right. And we'll set engine A and B to the integer of I. All right, let's go here, ENB, comma, I, and let's create a delay of 20 milliseconds. That'll be enough time for it to constantly add to itself. Make sure we click out of our string and that the string is connected up here between the analog right and delay. And now that we have that set, we're going to decelerate speed. So in this case up here, just so you are well aware, this was acceleration. Okay, and then down here is deceleration. I have to make sure I spell it right, right? So deceleration right there. And to do that, we're just going to do the opposite of what we created up here. So in this case, we can actually just copy this guy here. So we'll go control C, we'll paste it underneath our deceleration. And we're going to have to make some changes here. So we have integer I, and if we're saying it has hit 255, then I is also going to be greater than, so essentially we are just reversing everything here. And then I must minus from itself, right? So in this case, acceleration, we were saying we we're starting at zero, no speed. And if I was less than that 256 number, then it is going to have to add to itself and speed up. Now we're saying if I is at 255, then I is greater than the number 256, which is our endpoint from up here, then I needs to subtract from itself. We have the same thing here of our analog right engine A I, analog right engine B I, and delay of 20. Make sure our strings are attached here with a curly bracket. In this case, I'm on line 75. I'm gonna add a few more spaces, and now we're going to need to turn off the motors. Now to turn off the motors, you can go in and you can write the uh, whole digital right, I in one low, stuff like that. So turn off motors, so we know what's going on here. Um, oops, so here we go. Sorry, I'm just trying to clean this up. And let's just grab this when we turned off our motors from before. 
copy this. We will paste this in. All right, so our motors are now off. Void demo two. The string is connected up there. And now we can jump into our void loop. Our void loop is going to be very, very easy because we've already created the demos one and two. So in void loop, we're going to say demo one. Make sure your spelling matches the spelling that you did for your void demo up here and also here. So void demo one. We're going to run that program. We're going to set a delay once that program has finished to 1000. And next we'll run into our demo two. And we'll set a delay again of 1000 after it's finished. And that's it. We can make sure we have a board selected. In this case, I don't have my board physically plugged into my computer, so I'm going to test it on the Arduino Uno and verify and save and see if anything was happening. So we can see here that I have an issue somewhere here. It said expected A, error expected, semicolon before analog right. And where was that? Looks like it's in demo two. So here I messed up. I forgot a semicolon since I copied that. I had a semicolon here. Let's go back through, make sure I have semicolons on everything that needs to be. Looks like we're running well now. Let's verify. Ah, engine four was not declared in this scope, meaning that I messed up here somewhere. Yep, that's because engine four doesn't exist and it's engine A. So my line 26 should have been engine A, engine B, verify again. Digital right I N. So we can see here it said expected a semicolon before digital right. I forgot that. We verify again. And this is how you essentially go through the bug troubleshooting process. This is what we should have been doing all along. Usually I try and get it right the first time, but this was a good way to show you how we can interpret what it says down here to figure out what's going on. Now that this is good, I could actually load this onto my board after I have everything connected and I can set my, um, basically my robot to run now. In our next lesson, we are going to be looking at how to attach a servo function and have our robot make decisions off of what it sees uh, from the servo and also, sorry, the uh, ultrasonic sensor. So we'll do a servo ultrasonic sensor and also the motors with this so we can create a fully autonomous robot. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comment section if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're on Google Classroom, you can leave those questions on Classroom as well. All right, thanks for watching.